We will now be looking at a website called universe.com. The site claims to discover your visual DNA. What it does is run you through a gauntlet of photographs in different contexts and analyzes your choices based on a number of parameters. There are seven tests available for personality, movies, love, travel, art, career and mind. We'll be taking the personality test right now. The question here is art is and the visitors have to pick one of the options that most resembles their idea of art. Notice a blank in the middle which is something to choose if none of the options really appeal to you. There is a there are a number of questions like this. We will just click at them at random to access a phantom personality. Once you are done, you will be asked to log in or create a username. You don't need to do it right away and you can take another test instead. Your results are still saved. We will quickly take the mind test as well, then log in using a fabricated name. Once you create a username, you can see your results which will tell you what kind of a mind you have. There is a brief outline of the kind of person you are and other people who have taken the test with similar results. The more detailed breakdown of the answer compares the images you picked with the images picked by other users on Universe. Widgets are available for each of your quizzes to be shared on blogs or social networking sites. This is the HP TouchSmart PC. This all-in-one offering from HP is more like a gadget than a PC. It features a 22-inch touch-sensitive screen, which means you get to interact with it in more ways than just your keyboard and mouse. The piece we got had Windows 7, which has support for multi-touch, and bundled with it came a set of touch applications that are a part of the Windows Touch Pack. These applications are ported from Microsoft's Surface PC, which was a tabletop computing platform designed by Microsoft before Windows 7. Now here we have Surface Globe. Now as you can imagine, some applications really cry out for a touch interface. Maps, Google Earth and even the Surface Globe are fine examples of those kind of applications. It's very easy to manipulate the on-screen display using touch. The gestures are intuitive and you can pretty much do anything like zooming, panning and changing angle very easily. The touch interface is quite responsive too. Using the on-screen keyboard is a pain however. It's not accurate and along your learning curve you'll suffer a lot of typos and even mistaps here and there. So basically the accuracy is not that good. The tactile feedback is also very much missed. Another great application to look at is Microsoft Surface Collage. With this application you can manipulate pictures in a more fun way. You can move around pictures, arrange them in a particular order just like you would on the table. With gestures, you can resize images, add more images from the bottom bar by tossing them in the main area and it's really fun to play around with. At the end of it, when you're satisfied with your creation, just go ahead and save it as a wallpaper. There you have it. Here we have the physics game. Now it needs minimal input and again is quite intuitive. The idea is to fix fans and other kind of devices and make sure that the balloon doesn't burst. It's quite fun to play actually and it looks like I'm not too good at it. Oops, there goes my balloon. Now one of the more popular games in office is Warcraft 3. We decided to test out a real game and see if the touch functionality can add to the user experience. We realized quickly that serious gameplay is not really possible with the touch screen. This is because the way input is configured you have the mouse actions that are mapped to touch gestures. So to do a simple thing like right click, you need to press and hold the finger on the screen for a bit. This seriously reduces speed, right? So the action performed by the scroll wheel also for example is mapped to the pinching action. Another thing that requires you to move around a lot with your hand gestures is panning. Panning the screen also will have your hand all over the place. For one, it obscures your view, you can't see your unit properly and you know, it's, in the end it gets kind of too much of an effort too. So all in all it's too cumbersome we think. We'd rather stick to the good old mouse for conventional input, at least for non-touch games.
There are however some games that you can play on the touch smart. Like this Pong game for example. You instinctively know that two of your fingers go on these balls here. And the objective is to get one of the small balls across to the players through the player's defense. Michael and I had quite a wild time playing it and it kind of brings out the KJ new as you can see. In this chapter, I'm going to be just a real man.